Welcome to Teapot Genies. We're here at Rookwood Cemetery to do some further investigating with the help of Fran at the Independence section. Fran, what denominations are covered by this section of the cemetery? Virtually anything. If you're not Catholic, Jewish or Church of England, you'll come to us. Right, so what if you have no religion? What if you say an atheist, whatever that means? They do generally, we yeah. do have them in our section, which okay. they are governed by the Necropolis Act, mm -hmm. so they do have to have a minister for the committal. Oh, so if that could be awkward. They can't have a celebrant to do everything. They can have a celebrant in, but yes. if the minister has to do the committal. My grandfather used to have a joke, he'd say, see that cemetery over there, they had to shoot the first bloke to start it off. <laughs> researching their family history, what are some of the common problems that come up as far as you're concerned? General lack of information, mm -hmm. they get a death certificate and it'll say Rookwood Necropolis but won't tell them whether what religion mm -hmm. and it's a number of different officers within Rookwood. Mm -hmm. Then also if the name, the spelling has been altered a little bit or they've had an MAC and it's been altered to MC. Mm -hmm. <gasps> You know, computers are marvellous, but if you mm. don't have exactly, no, it doesn't come up. Mm. Mm. Also transcribing from the old records oh, to the computer. Yes, would be, you'd probably they had beautiful a old mistakes. copper plate yeah, records. Yeah. To see. The D's look like H's and <laughs> the U's look like V's. Mm. <laughs> the rest you just try and work out. Yes, yeah. But yes, it's generally something like People, that. On death certificates where persons died, um, how do they know to come to this section? It'll either say Presbyterian like Rookwood, Necropolis, Presbyterian, or Methodist, or Independent. Yes, it does. On a so it says Independent. Yes. And it's just by a telephone call to us that they'll find out that we cover the Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, things like that. So even way back then, was it noted Independent? Independent and Presbyterian, Methodist, back then were all individual trusts. We have since taken over the administration of uh, Do you have any famous people buried here? Yes, we have the grave of David Jones, mm -hmm. of John Fraser, who is in the Presbyterian section and there's an enormous um, sandstone monument to him. Really? We have um, Paul's ice cream, Paul's vault. Okay. When people come out here, do they act like detectives when they're doing their family research? To research family history, yes. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be. Um, and they will go through individual grave so stones, through the inscription records for Rookwood Cemetery. If they're not showing on ours to see if there's a memorial that will give them more information. They will try and find any headstone, even if it's laying down, that they can have a look at. So give them more information on that particularly if it's something that they're looking for and it's not quite sure with like with your comings, if the S is off it, whether it is exactly the one they're looking for. You have to be. What did you say there was an inscription? There is oh, an so inscription record for Rookwood. The Friends of Rookwood in the bicentennial year oh. went throughout the cemetery. They would lever up all the headstones that were on the ground and do the inscriptions, put them back down. Ooh, and that is on record in your library. So it is, even if there's a memorial and not a burial, you will get information. Fran, what's the reaction when people finally find the grave they've been looking for for years and years? Very ecstatic. Right. To find something that's eluded them for a long time mm. and to be able to pinpoint it down, they just about jump the counter. <laughs> Particularly if they find a skeleton. Find something that shouldn't be there or a baby that nobody yeah. had ever told them about. And, Something like so, that. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Fran, very much. We're going to head off now and see if we can find any skeletons in any of our graves. Thank Glad, you. Glad to be of help. Thank you. Okay. I'm looking for John Thomas Cummings. Died on, uh, buried on the 5th of October, 1901. I have a John in 1903. Right, we'll go to the books. Thanks. What date in 1901? Uh, 5th of October. Section 5C4782. Okay. 
There's no S, oh, so it's John Cumming. Right, thank you. That's the problem. Common mistake. Yes. John now, did know. He is buried with a Hugh MacDonald. Can you look up Arthur James Hadson, can you please? H A D S O N? That's right. <coughs> Arthur James. 13th to the 12th, 1903. That's right. 68 years of age. Mm -hmm. And he's buried with a Thomas Evans, 24th of June, 1918. Oh, would you have any information on both of them? As to right. Where, where they were living? Or? Arthur James Hudson. Do you know where he was? Yes. Uh, From Rookwood Asylum. <laughs> and the other fellow? Thomas Evans. Uh, I don't know the name. Of right, twenty fourth of June, nineteen eighteen, seventy seven. Came from Rookwood Asylum. Would that be a pauper's grave? It's a pauper's grave owned by the hospitals right. at the time. So there won't be any elaborate headstone. There won't be. It'll be a totally unmarked grave. Yes. So it was Rookwood Hospital, Rookwood asylum. asylum, a hospital or an asylum? I think you'll find that Rookland Asylum was just Rookland Hospital. They named a lot of the public hospitals in those times as asylums. All 1903, you may find from the dates there's been an epidemic or something at the time. There is a lot on this page, all in the same time frame. So, all from the hospital, so yes, there'd be something. Grave of John Thomas Cummings, son of a convict, in all his glory. Beneath all these weeds lies Arthur James Hadson, who we've found is buried in a pauper's grave. Mark, why is this area so overrun with weeds? Said it's mainly because the cemetery has not got enough funding to cover an old area such as this. The weekend detainees, they come out here mainly from Silverwater Jail. They're the ones that do cut. We're lucky we will be done three to four times a year. Surprisingly, the oldest section of this cemetery is terribly overgrown. But with the help of the Cemetery Trust staff, we were able to find the graves that we were looking for. But unfortunately, there were no headstones on any of them. So it's back to the drawing board. Our journey through Rookwood Cemetery was most interesting and I'm sure we'll be back here soon to gather further information. Until next time, it's goodbye from Kay, Wendy and Billy.